It's Garage Chemistry Time with Miller. That's me. What up, Lions? Today I'm gonna to do a fun little demo with you. It goes way back to the chemical reactions unit, and that was from first quarter, or first semester, second quarter, whatever. Um, what's, going, what's going on is I have these two clear solutions, okay? One of them's a little opaque, one of them is nice and clear, but nevertheless, it's solution A and solution B. Now, what I'm gonna do is, this is called the iodine clock reaction. I'm gonna combine these two solutions and it forms a reaction that you can actually time, like you can set your clock by, hence the iodine clock reaction. So let's take a peek and see what happens. All clear, all clear. What? Sorcery. Call me Albus Dumbledore. I'm making magic. Now, what's actually going on here? So, like I said, I had two solutions here. Solution A and solution B. Solution A just had sodium iodate in it. Solution B, that opaque one, was a combination of three things. Sodium sulfite, citric acid, that's that chemical compound in the middle, and starch. Starch is what makes it a little opaque. Now, there's four steps to what's going on. There's actually a lot of steps going on in here. But essentially, that iodate from the solution A reacts with the sulfite in solution B. The sulfite reduces the iodate into iodide, that um, iodine ion, and the iodate oxidizes the sulfite into sulfate. Cool thing. You know it's oxidized because it's adding that oxygen to it. Now, the second thing that happens is now we have a bunch of iodides um, in the solution. And they react with the acid from the citric acid, but that's where that H plus comes from, and the remainder of the iodates from the um, solution A. Remember, this is all in one solution. It's not separate anymore. And, lo and behold, the acid oxidizes the iodate and um, into iodide, and those two iodides will form that iodine. That's that I2, okay? Because um, iodine is um, part of Brinkelhoff. It's a diatomic atom or molecule. And that's where that H2O comes in, okay? So now what's going on here is um, these reactions are going back and forth and back and forth. And notice number three. Hold on a sec. I had that I2. I had that iodine just floating around in solution. And all of a sudden, it goes back to iodide. What gives? Well, it's going to do that because of that sulfite that's in there. And this reaction keeps going back and forth and back and forth until all that sulfite is used up. Okay? It's that limiting reactant in there. So once all the sulfite's used up, the iodine isn't going to be reduced again. Okay? It's not going to be reduced back into iodide. Um, so all that's happening in that span of what? Like... 10 seconds until that uh, those two clear solutions turn blue. So that's what's going on there. That fourth step, what actually is that blue color? Well, remember, the last thing in there in solution B was the starch. The starch is this very long um, polysaccharide. And what happens is uh, the iodine bonds with the surface of that polysaccharide and forms that blue color. What's going on is the iodine is uh, pulling electrons away from the carbon and the hydrogen that make up that starch, and it gives it that blue color. Light's able to bend through based off of how the electrons are being pulled away. It gives off that blue color with the energy associated with it. Pretty cool stuff right there. Tune in for more fun little demos that I'm gonna be doing. Um, we're gonna do a luminol demo uh, maybe in a couple days. I'm gonna make things glow up in here. Um, otherwise, I have a really fun um, demo where I turn a penny into a gold penny. That's going to be cool. And then tune in real soon for synthesis of acid. All right, guys. Have a wonderful day.